It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Nima Akasha Zivi. How are you? Oh, Ed, are you asking of me yesterday? Yes, I was. I don't have help anymore. Oh, so I had to put everything in order. I cleaned up. Yesterday. How about your glasses? We're well, now kind of used to your glasses. I'm used to seeing now. I no longer have that pain anymore. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> so, so I'm supposed to go get a new reading. Uh -huh. But because I don't have the pain anymore, See, I'm just there. Yeah. I've been trying to continue reading with my yeah, eyes and reduce the light. Yeah, it used to, it used to was something that was needed correcting and the glasses mm -hmm. corrected it for me. Imagine it, boy, it took three confirm, years. Please. So far for that. Yeah. Yeah. confirm. Please. If I can bypass it, I'll do it. Yeah, but confirm first, then we yeah, bypass in faith and thanksgiving. Go. How are you doing, Mariam? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. So Lifestyle ML is back. Oh, this, oh nice. Yeah, so this month, is what we're calling dry January. Mm -hmm. So dry January, usually you would hear is when, you know, you take alcohol out of, you know, consuming alcohol in the whole, for the whole month of January. Mm -hmm. But I'm adding that you also take out all the sugary drinks. So, you know, you do dirty December, all the dirty things you drank. So now it's time to take it out. So for the whole month of January, we're just drinking water. Mm. Have your teas, you can have your coffee, but no right. alcohol. No juices, no drinks. soft drinks, all those sort of things. So you can join us as we cleanse our system. Yes. I want to join now. I'm number yeah, one. Yeah. So it's classmates. open. So it's that's open. it. Just but drink water. Don't you have a group that you monitor all this? Yeah, I have a community. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez. You took me out of the For accountability. Community. You took me out of the community. <laughs> like, <'cause laughs> she took me out of the community too. I but I'm like a class perfect right now. I don't want to champion any cause for her right now. It comes to you. How are you doing? I love your outfit. Thank you. Yeah, How's it going? We're launching this for the Ramadan. I think Ooh. this is gorgeous. I think everybody yeah. should pre-order. You might get it ready to model like, for us. Me, I'm already pre-ordering, but I really <laughs> love this design. Thank and you, I think it's you. purely busy. I'll stand up and take a picture later. Yeah, mm. I, but I am vexing. Well, I, I don't know how Nigerians love to cheat people and defraud them of their hard earned Nigerians don't love. I Just paid for a product, Shaper, from Honey Syrup Pro. You know, shape and I to shape myself because after 30 December, I wanted yeah, to, yeah. to look, Sing you know, up. cinch it up as you are losing weight and everything since the 21st of December. I'm hearing stories. They've not brought it. And one of the reasons I decided to patronize was I saw the lady that sells hair, one necker hair. Mm. One necker was modeling that thing back to back to back to back. And I ordered, and they have been telling me stories. Now they're not even responding to me again. So I'm going to drag them. I need my money back, over 300,000 naira. I'm not, I'm not a thief. Yes, I bought, I paid for two. Yeah. And, you know, I made a comment on their page. Um, some people saw it, and then they came to my DM. They responded there, then came to my DM and said, ah, that they have not been able to get their product since. Some people paid as far as back as November and October. I have their messages and their receipts with me. So after collecting my own, I will still drag that they pay those innocent Nigerians. I sell online. You don't spoil businesses for people. I sell online and I'm legitimate. I buy online. You can't stop people from buying online. This is the era of online. We do things online. So if you're going to be taking a product and you don't want to money, uh, uh, money from somebody and you don't want to give them the product, don't take the money. Mm -hmm. Don't take the money. Fund. One necker and honey syrup, please. I need my products. <laughs> I was vexing you. Know. Uh -huh. I've heard you. All right, Kelly. I know I can't even share good news. Share your own. I better share your own. Share your own. Good news. <laughs> No, so actually, there's something I just wanted. I patronized. I have this young lady that started making clothes. She, Ugechi. Okay. And she was actually, you know, she said, I didn't really like her clothes. But then I told her, that, listen, you have to upgrade. upgrade. So she was so proud. So ah, I've come back to school. Oh. I learned new things. I Try me now. I said, are you sure? <laughs> now I made this outfit for you. Just to show her that oh. I wore it today, Ugechi. I wore your dress. I and love I'm the proud. color on you. Yeah. Color? Love, yeah. Uh, and of course, style. the cut is... Color is not my like thing. Indeed. I know. It's usually not... It's not so, my thing. Yes. So it's not I, your yeah, regular yeah, color, color. But then I was... But pops. Yes. It pops. So I really thought the red would kind of contrast. And, I don't know. and you dug up our hair. Like yeah. A, oh, yeah. Because, yeah. Okay, let me not speak. This is marketing everything. We are in trouble. I don't agree for anybody. No, exactly. That's true. You're not grieving anyway. That's why I come see this one break of clients. Yes, so. Let me go on a break. We come back. We go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. All right, we're going to start with the nation. 35 billion naira, 585 million naira probes, Sadia Edu barred from traveling. Supreme Court reserves judgment on Mufang's um, appeal against SAC. Tinubu orders cut of President's Vice President's traveling teams. World Bank, global economy set for weakest performance in three decades. Police parade suspects in Plato killings and others. Short third million bridge worsens gridlock. Police rescue hotelier held after payment of 25 million naira ransom. And soldier in trouble for insulting Songwulu. Okay, which story are we starting with? Major headline. Major headline. The EFCC said they grilled um, the, former, uh, the suspended minister of humanitarian affairs and the former minister, and they had to take their passport to restrict their travelings. So um, just to restrict their movement, of course, they kept them. But the story extended to other developments around this case. So yeah. they also invited three bank CEOs, and this story, uh, Nation did not reveal them, but we saw the bank CEOs online. You can go online to know the CEOs for their involvement in it. They said there's a... Um, law that restricts them. That's the Money, Anti-Money Laundry Act of 2023, Section 5, 10, and 16, sub B, uh, paragraph B, sorry, restricts them. They should have flagged such transactions mm. for, you know, for mm. violating the Money Laundry, uh, Anti-Money Laundry Act. So they've been invited and they are being investigated for conspiracy in these dealings with the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry. Um, also, the Minister for Interior was seen at the villa as well as a uh, minister for arts and um, arts and culture, I think. Mm. She was also at the villa. Those were some of the ministers also, you know, right now trying to say the president. But they said the <coughs> minister for interior only went to brief the president about his ministry. Another witness report in the story says he wasn't able to see the president. <coughs> so I hope that um, tidying up, because the Minister for Interior for me is doing very well. Yeah. I know that his company is presently being investigated around this. I hope that you know, he's absolved of any shot three times before he was taken away from his home at artillery in Port Harcourt by gunmen. They said that, um, the kidnappers refused to release him even after they had you know, pay the ransom in dollars worth about 25 million naira. The police commissioner, Olatunji Disu, was the one who spoke yesterday. And um, he said the victim was kidnapped December 19, uh, 2023, in his home. The victim is a popular, you know, hotelier. And by the time the, um, the gunmen got there, they shot him three times in the leg before they took him away. So uh, they had tried, the family members tried gathering the money. She did not inform the police. But after paying close to 25 yeah. million naira, the government refused to, the kidnappers refused to release him. So the wife had to go report to the police and they traced them. They traced them to their hideouts. They f first of all traced the car that they used. They had taken the car to the mechanic wash workshop to change the color. But they were able to get at least two of the vehicles used for that attack. And then, you know, went into the hiding. They were able to get, uh, I think, some ammunition from them as well. They now said that they discovered that they were collecting the money in food coolers. So they would tell people to bring the ransom, mm -hmm. put it as if they were carrying food to them. That's how they have been operating. It's just good that um, he's been released. And, um, okay. you know. Yeah. And then I have um, police parade suspects in the plateau killing. So um, three suspects linked to the Christmas Eve attack um, on, on the plateau communities have been arrested and are being paraded by the police. According to the police, the suspects are Ahmed Suleiman, Balikisu Aliyu, which sounds to me like a female name, I, I'm not sure, and then Abuki Samuel. They were found with arms and ammunition, a golf car, and, you know, other things. So they said that um, so far with the investigations, they've been able to apprehend these three, but they're still investigating and hopefully <coughs> they, they would um, be able to arrest the others as well. Um, the police also talked about the attack that happened at the supermarket in Nasara State, if you remember, where four people, you know, including the CBN staff, was killed. And um, they said that because of um, intelligence, they were able to also, um, you know, apprehend those suspects as well. And um, the 
team is working hard, you know, to make sure that they are doing the best concern security wise. Right. The police gave like a full update of what is done so far. It says the police informed that the total of sixty seven suspects so far have been arrested, you know. Really sorry state by the end of this year, 2024, according to the World Bank, latest global economic prospects report says that this is the slowest half decade of gross domestic product growth in 30 years. And that's a global record. And it's saying that the only thing that is kind of holding us up is the U.S.'s um, economy, the strength of U.S. economy. Uh, but according to them, it said that without a major correction, then this year will go down as the, the decade of the wasted opportunity, near-term growth will remain weak, leaving many developing countries, especially ours, the poorest, stuck in a trap with paralyzing levels of debt and tenuous access to food. Moving on quickly now to the punch. Uh, humanitarian ministry scandal, EFCC seizes Edu, former minister's passports, picture story here. Police parade three suspects linked to play two killings. Uh, Lagos police look into the Tewa Savage petition against David Doe. To be Joshua Squan Fault, BBC report, ex disciple Knox Late Prophet. 85 abducted as bandits return to Kaduna Abuja Expressway. Nigerians hail Tinubu as present trims foreign trips entourage. Fake degrees, FG probes, 107 private varsities, and NNPCL post over 2 trillion naira profit. Okay, which story? Let's take one story for you. We one. can do the video. Okay. So the Lagos State Police Command has confirmed the receipt of the petition by Nigerian singer and songwriter Tiwa Savage over alleged bullying and threats to her life by you know the Grammy nominee David Davido Adeliki, David Adeliki, known as Davido. Uh, the State Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Houdain responded to an inquiry and said that they have started investigation into the allegations and he says i can confirm to you that we have received the petition and investigation has commenced and um, in the petition which was in circulation um, all over social media um siwa had accused davido of uttering disrespectful words to her amongst other threats and she said that um she had you know i think responded to a post or made a post about davido's baby mama that's Sophia, and I think Davido saw it and then, you know, sent a message to her, you know, talking about it and insulting her, saying unprintable things to her. And so she reminded Davido of how she had been supportive of him even when he lost the son and, you know, all of that. And Davido says, ah, you have to be very careful in a place like Lagos. I'm going to deal with you. You have to really be very careful. her life the video should be held responsible but i'm happy that um the police is already investigating yeah uh, let's just see how this works. okay let's gonna show hmm. so have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather well here goes imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail we need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps...
Okay, we're still reviewing punch. Yes, I have the federal government on Tuesday says um, <clears throat> it would launch an investigation into private universities established in the last 15 years. So the Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, um, he made it known in Abuja while inaugurating the investigative panel on fake degrees and activities of degree mills in the country. So, um, you know, first of all, Nigeria currently has a total of 147 private universities and uh, 107 of them were established in the last 15 years. Um, you know, the report goes to, you know, make a list of some of them. The Minister for Education says that there's an interministerial panel and this panel has been given the mandate to examine whether or not private universities established in the last 15 years have in place prescribed facilities, appropriate management structure, adequate funding of programs, requisite staff, nature of staff full-time, contract adjunct, visiting other types, and so many other things that you know this um, panel is supposed to investigate and give um, recommendations for. Amongst some of these um, recommendations, they said that the panel will examine um, they said other terms of reference is to establish if unapproved foreign institutions, that's the degree mills, exist or not in Nigeria and whatever form with the identities and locations, if any. Um, you know, this amongst so many other things, which is good. I like it because of what has happened, but I'm wondering, did it take, did they have to take this for this sort of, because what they are saying is that to check these universities that have been established in the last 15 years, have they been set up right? Or did you, didn't we check all this time? As yes. they were I mean, established. And yes, or spot checks over the period of 15 years. Do we have to uh, wait? Have, yes, do we have, have to wait till now together? But good that you started. So let's keep it up. <laughs> all right, so, Alistair, go ahead. 85 people abducted allegedly on uh, the Kaduna Abuja um, Expressway. According to this punch reporter, who visited the area. 35, 30, 35. 85. Wow. 30 travelers were abducted and 55 people were abducted from the commun three communities bordering around the road in Katari, Badoko, Dudumishi, Dudumishini and Kakwari villages on the Katari area along the Kaduna Expressway. And the district head of Bishini that covers that whole area says that what he's experiencing now is something else. That of course the federal government has put a military around the road. They are trying, but they need to deploy more security operatives. He said yes, they just they found two lifeless, lifeless bodies in the mm -hmm. village, and you know the attacks are happening incessantly. But uh, the police command is saying no, but they didn't specify people that were abducted. They didn't even specify those that were killed. We just talked about uh, having uh, had a gun dwell along the Badun, uh, Kaduna Abuja Expressway with security operatives, and that uh, the bandits were, you know, dealt with on the 6th of January. But they don't want to confirm the number of people abducted. My prayer is that you know God keeps us safe, and <coughs> the military are dead, and these bandits are confrontational. But then the president must also look into yeah. stronger uh, measures. That area and play to the swimming pools across yeah. the country needs this. Attention. The public affairs analyst, uh, member of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, Mr. Dari Adijumo, on Tuesday faulted BBC's documentary on the founder, um, TB Joshua. He described the documentary as unfounded, noting that the characters interviewed in the reports were unknown to the church. Um, if you recall, BBC reports that no fewer than 25 persons gave eyewitness accounts bordering on allegations of sexual assault, physical abuse, uh, faked miracles and trauma allegedly suffered in the hands of the late um, um, pastor, uh, T.B. Joshua. Uh, according to this spokesperson from SCORN, I said that BBC has compromised this, their lofty principles by descending into fictional narrative and propaganda, thus turning itself into a weapon for a hatchet job as gangsters in the gap of journalism. However, um, another person... Um, a former disciple of TB Joshua, Paul Agoma, who spoke to BBC, insisted that the allegations were true, adding that he had to go into hiding for eight years after speaking out um, as his life was, um, was um, under threat. So as expected, Scorn is supposed to debunk and say they're lying. Mm, yeah. But if Scorn themselves can carry okay, out and assure us if yes. those things are non-existent, 
I've always I lived, grew up in Ali Mosh. I didn't like the airiness around that place. So what, what, what is that? I mean, responsible thing for like the church vampire. to have done. The responsible thing for the church to say, we have seen it and we'll investigate internally and also get our own response. But, yeah, but I hey, I, I can understand their own... Um, you want to investigate the dead? They don't, to find out, investigate the faces, to see who else has, can share a story like this. You even say that they don't know the faces. <sighs> No, there was one that was, report, that was a reporter that she was, uh, she, was, um, she was a reporter for the church. I mean, she yeah. was also interviewed. So Including we saw her. the stepdaughter. Yeah. They don't the know the faces. Wow. He yeah. plants you. Oh, wow. Small. Daily son. Oh, wow. Degree Bazaar. FG probes private varsities and others. Tinubu slashes international domestic travel delegation by 60%. Dang. EFCC Dang. quizzes detains Beta Edu. Gunmen kill traditional chief in Ogun. Call declares Ayanwo as PDP national, chair, uh, national secretary. Supreme Court reserves judgment on Mufwang, Omagegi, and Bagi. Tiwa Savage petitions police says Davido should be held responsible if anything happens to her. And Kalu drums support for Tinubu donates security vans to police. Okay, which story? So this very short story is very discouraging. So in Shagamu town yesterday, the government just attacked and the three, uh, a gang of three shot the chief in the head, the head, traditional chief in the area. Shot him point blank in the head. He died. He's since been buried according to Islamic rights. The police commissioner of the state confirmed it. He said he attended it and is reassuring that they will be arrested. But this is so Chagam, please. Governor of Ogun should just declare a state of emergency and let us know if before courts take over the whole the, the state from him. It's continuous. Every year, the whole of last year, we kept taking courts attack in Shagam. Yeah. And early this year, we started again. So, so I'm partly from Shagam. My late mother in law. Oh. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Which anyway, story? I have uh, major co cost cutting measures. So, our president yesterday mm. approved a slash in the size of official delegations for foreign and domestic trips by 60%. Surely. With immediate effect. Twally. No, go come. <laughs> Twally. 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 So, um, let me just go straight to it. According to the directive, for trips within the country, the, the president shall have an entourage of no more than 25 officials. Mm -hmm. Foreign trips, the number of accompanying officials shall not be more than 20. Sheep. Vice president is five officials for, um, for foreign trips and no more than 15 for local trips. First lady and the wife of the vice president shall, ha, shall also not have more than five officials on entourage when traveling outside the country, and also a maximum of 10 when they're traveling within the country. Uh, I saw a lot of comments, you know, back and forth. Many people, of course, applauded it, but there were some people that are saying that this is also a security issue. So the president, Respond. ahead of you, mm. said <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that um, this is a security outfit within the state shall be the security mastermind for this official. So we're not going to be carrying them from wherever they are. Yes. When you come to a state, what is on the ground will be there. So this is, he's saying he's doing this, the reduction in the size of entourage will bring some, will bring total sanity and prudence in the management of commonwealth of our people. The president is insistent that the notion of government wastage, excessive recurrent expenditure is over. Mm. Officials would no longer be allowed to conduct government affairs in a way different from what the latter was asking Nigerians to do by way of prudence and cost management. So what in summary, the key word there the is president prudence. is saying he's telling Nigerians to tighten their belts. Mm -hmm. They must be seen to be doing yeah. the same. Yeah. So, okay, hopefully, for this. hopefully it goes towards the legislature. Remember, yes. it's one thing for the executive to do something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 leadership is always from the top. Well done. Okay, so Senator representing Abia North, Dr. Oji Uzakalo, has appealed to Nigerians to support the president um, in his quest to develop the country. Kalo made the call at his country home in Igbere, uh, Abia State, uh, while presenting four security patrol vehicles, he donated to the, gov um, to the governor, to the, um, to the Abia command of the, Ni of the Nigerian police and the Bear Vigilante group. Kalu um, said that the Toyota Hilux vehicles he donated were fun funded from his pocket, urged the police in the division to utilize them in fighting crime. Um, said they are meant to encourage police in the state to do their work. I'm not doing this as senator representing Abia North, but I'm doing it in support. I need similar donations in other places. So he's saying that we should support the president as he's trying to also ensure economic growth within.
the region. Yeah, the Lagos State Government has started working at um, Ted Miller Bridge. It's the Lagos State of Federal Government? Lagos State yeah. Government, yes. Okay. Eight-week traffic diversion on the Ted Miller Bridge, yes. It affected me this morning when I was just heading streets, but they had to, I had to divert to um, that Winibo road to yeah. connect back to the office. So they said um, there are 250 traffic management personnel that have been deployed in the axis to help you know, ma manage the inconvenience and Nigerians need to support them. It's just for a little while, we, the road will be free when they are done with you know, working on it and right. so that we can have convenience and motorists will be able to enjoy the road. So um, they are going to be doing a lot of diversion. So just pay attention when you're driving, when you see a diversion. How many weeks again? Eight weeks. That's the Island Lagos State Department is issuing the traffic diversion mm. in laws, but the federal government... Not even going to the island for the next... Yeah. Eight weeks, eh? Eight weeks. Vanga, I might be our final paper. Let's see if we've not taken Removal of fuel subsidy untimely, says Governor Makinde. Uh, David Doe, we talked about that already. Cadbury, Nigeria, to sell 404 million shares over inability to pay the $7.7 .7 million debt. Cost of Governor's Tinubu Stashi's delegation... Uh, increased by 70%, 60%. FG short terminal bridge for eight weeks repair. And I think that's uh, the story. Let me just take very quick. I was going to ha have the Cadbury story, but let me come to Tribune very quickly. Oh. We are not owing MTN interconnect charges, says Globalcom. Um, Rivers, that's Nigerian Tribune. Rivers Assembly asked for Barra to re represent 2024 budget. Suspected cultists murder head of the genetic code in, in Ogun. And FG sets up panel to prove um, private varsities and foreign institutions. Let me take Cadbury. Cadbury Nigeria has offered to swap its $7.7 .7 million debt owed to Cadbury Shrips Overseas Limited for, for more equity. Cadbury uh, Shrips Overseas Limited, controlled by um, an investor in Cadbury. Uh, the statement was made yesterday uh, by Cadbury. It says that it's facing challenges servicing the foreign currency denomination loans due to persistent foreign currency scarcity in the country. The, uh, the liberalization of the foreign exchange market in, 20, in 2023 and attendant devaluation of the currency put further pressure on company as narrow value of its foreign currency denominations loans increased significantly. So this resulted in an unrealistic, uh, unrealized exchange loss of 20.6 billion naira. So they're not going to... Um, see how they're going to pay that back. So Global Com said they are not owing you know, that they are, according to a source within the agency that talked to the news agency of Nigeria in Lagos, they said the amount that they are owing is just 1.6 billion and it has been paid without controversy. And so those threats that uh, they won't be able to call out to MTN lines, but we are using the line. Okay. That's uh, all <laughs> we can take on this front page review. When we come back, move on to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good, I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, Abby. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you, thank you. Now my question. 
which I feel is a cheap question. Well, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. That is it. I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. <laughs> She you didn't want me. me. You didn't want me now. I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym is. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know. <laughs> you know, sorry. It's, it's supposed to be yeah. I just said, let me take a give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there. I'm not there. <laughs> you, did not, you, you did not say final answer. This is final answer. You did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you know, how, many, how many cameras do they have? Nikon. I went to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. <laughs>gentlemen make welcome pioneer positive force member dancing queen of the 80s non-conformist afrobeat historian in a right and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show your view omoyeni yeni and if you career professionals yeah. and they're like look I don't want to leave my job I love what I'm doing I want yeah. to build my career I want to be a career professional because there's this narrative out there that every salary is not enough everybody must be okay. an entrepreneur everybody awesome. must not be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. but everybody must be an investor yeah. salary cannot help you to create wealth alone but salary can become the seed that you use for investment and then to create one. So I want to thank everyone that came. You know, the last time I invited us for the free meeting, yeah. it was successful. That was uh, Wednesday the 3rd. We had over 1,000 people oh, wow. in the hall and we had over 100,000 people online That's all over big. the world. Oh, wow. It was amazing. And then we released the book. So the book is out. Everybody go get your copy. Nice. If you have the school of money, then it's time to go for the next level. Aww. If you don't have school of money, go for school of money. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> because this one is specialized yeah. to career people. And I believe very strongly that it will be a tremendous help to people. Uh, when I came the last time, I told you that there are events that are lined up. That the first one is free. You remember at the end was so how what on the other? So the first one is free. We've done the free one, and we have uh, two other events lined up now. And the next one is also another free one in a way because we want to just try to empower people with the way the economy is going. I've realized that there are a lot of people that have people don't understand that to succeed in business. You need technical skills and business skills. Mm. So you can be an amazing caterer and you fail in a restaurant business. Mm. Mm. You can be an amazing fashion designer and you fail in business. Why? Because you have the technicals, you can cook, 
but can you market? Mm. Yeah. Can you manage customer? Yeah. Can you manage money? Yeah. Can you do that's cost? The business of it. So that is the business aspect. Yeah. So and that's why even in the book I was talking about the fact that you need to know that they, they, they that's in this new book. Yeah, yeah, that's in this book. new book. So the, so the first meeting we have coming up, we want to train a thousand people free. Okay. For one week, from Monday the twenty second to Saturday the twenty seventh of this month, January, a thousand okay. people. But when we say train a thousand people free, we now say there is no way we know who is coming and who is not coming. Yeah. So let's put a fee of just fifteen thousand naira. Okay. Because in the one week you are there from eight a.m. to four p.m. I'm going to be there with you for one week. We're bringing in a lot of other facilities, like twenty facilitators. We're taking you through about sixty models, and for that one so week. Being resident. No, 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 you no, go no, it's no. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, but there are hostels around that people can. So, so for one week, and then you are going to be getting refreshment every day. Mm -hmm. You are getting material. So the 15,000 is just number one, to be sure who is coming, yes. so that we can plan logistically. Mm -hmm. Number two, to be sure you are serious. Mm -hmm. Because the event mm -hmm. itself, invest. you are supposed to be spending somewhere around 550,000. Yeah. But so if you are interested, call the numbers, visit us. And, and you give us your view, 50 slots. And let them come. Oh, shit. Maybe for a discounted price. Yeah, let price. them come. Through us, they get a, a discount, maybe 10K. Approved. Hey. Hey. Approved. So, <laughs> if you want to go through your view, we have the yeah. so send you details. Yeah. So, the amazing and thing about this is that, apart from training a thousand people, we are going to be we are giving a five million dollar grant okay. and microfinance for those that qualify. The minimum is fifty thousand. The maximum is two fifty per person to help you start or grow an existing business. Mm. And that's why we then we are also putting in one year mentorship. Mm -hmm. So all the facilitators will be available to guide you. Mm -hmm. Because once you to go to class and listen, say, I'm confused. I tried this one, it didn't work. Then you can also contact us. Yeah. So that's the next free thing we are doing. Oh, but good. the major reason why I'm here mm -hmm. okay. is for okay, the okay, Conclave okay. Summit. Okay. You know, I'm mm -hmm. the global president of the Bilonias Conclave. Hey. Yes. The Bilonias Conclave is a network of high net worth individuals. Mm -hmm that are under my mentorship. We are members in 14 countries. Mm. And every year we host our Conclave Summit where we come together from all over the world to equip people for the year and to help them navigate their way to the world. So for this year, the date is 1st and 2nd of March 2024. All the events have been taking place. We started three years ago or four years ago, and we've been using Marriott since the beginning. So we started with Marriott immediately to launch. We've been, we've been with them. So we're going to be in Marriott again for two days, first and second of March. It's two days fully residential. So we're talking hotel, we're talking breakfast, lunch, dinner, we're talking hangout, and then we're going to be training you, and we're going to be equipping you. The theme for this year is cracking the global billionaire's code. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Cracking the global billionaire's code. A lot of people in the country think that they are rich, but when you change their money to pounds, or then, you change their money to dollars, you now realize that ah, they do. So, so we have been helping our people. So we want to bring other people to come and learn how you can invest in, the, yeah. in other currencies, how you can make money in other currency. And joining me this year will be Tara Feladru Toye. She's going to be talking to us about wealth creation and focusing more about women and wealth creation. Okay. You know, I've always said wealth is not sexually transmitted. Uh, marriage is not economic empowerment. Your children are not a retirement plan. So <laughs> women need to be empowered and women needs to understand that that's also important for their own well-being. So mm -hmm. she's going to be doing that. And I'm bringing in Sheung Onigbide. Yes, who I'm a huge fan of. Now, these guys, you know, yes. Budget, uh, Flutterwave, Paystack, all these guys are doing amazing stuff. People don't know the kind of money yeah, that you can make in yeah, tech. Yeah. So it's going to come to tell us all the wealth creation opportunities in the <laughs> tech world that people can take advantage of. Mm. And then, because of this new book, and to try to help career people. Because there are a lot of people, hey, this is your conclave, it's too expensive. Because to be a member, you can pay as an individual, as a couple, or as an organization. So we have now decided, it's okay, let me use my pastor mind. So <laughs> during those two days, yeah. we are now having a free section in the evening. Okay. okay. So day one and day two, myself and one of my uh, ministry guys, um, um, Joshua Selman, we're not going to be having a free session in the night. Okay. And we call so that the Kingdom Wealth Summit. Okay. So it's, we're going to be focused because we're talking about raising kingdom ambassadors. So it's, mm. not, it's not money so that you Anyhow, can blow. Yeah. It's not money so that you can be equipped to fulfill purpose and make a difference. So Positive. that one is for career people, career professionals. Mm. And you register, we screen you. Okay. To now give you VIP to come. So because it's free, it doesn't mean anybody can just okay. come. Yeah. Hey, Mario, no be joke. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for the main event itself, yeah. everyone that wants to attend is $2,000 per person. Really? $2,000. Mm -hmm. And our exchange rate is now on the Naira. 
How yeah. much is money? The bill is now hundred naira that we are using for exchange rate, mm -hmm. and it's two thousand dollars. And that money covers for the two days hotel accommodation, all the materials, breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything you're going to enjoy. It's an amazing experience. But today is when the fifty percent discount should expire. Yeah, 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 you know, I've been telling you that. You can do a thousand dollars today. Yeah. So today is supposed to end. So because I'm just coming today, and some of my people are just hearing, we have now extended it to the twentieth of January. Oh, so nice. between now and the twentieth of January, okay. you can now pay fifty percent discount, one thousand dollars, which okay. is our exchange rate of now. So nine hundred thousand. You can go to my and say, well, find out how much is one room per yes, night. Yes, times two. Now, because you see, poverty is a mindset. Mm. You say, ah, well, no, 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 no. This meeting is not for everybody. We have given you the free one. Mm -hmm. This one is for high for net worth mm -hmm. individuals, how executive people that are serious about creating wealth yeah. and building transgenerational yeah. wealth. So, yeah. Oh, get fantastic. Ready. So, so but now there is somebody is interested. Did they go to a website? A number that so the numbers online? Uh, should be on the screen. The website is www.olumideemanuel.org. Olumideimano.org. When you go to the website, you see the banner, you see the link. So if you are registering for the free one, you want to come in the evening, you can't afford down red, you're a career person, you're an HR, you're like, ah, I wish I knew about oh, this, but yeah. let me just go for the free one, go get the new book and go start yeah. my journey. Then you register and you fill out the deal. We'll now screen you. Mm. And then we'll so now send no you guarantee. the VIP. No, it's not guaranteed. Mm. We'll send you the VIP pass because we only have vacancy because our members are already free. So we only have vacancy for 400 people for the free one. Okay. 400. Okay. And right now, yeah. over 6,000 people have registered. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, over 6,000 people are free them. now. So we have to now screen them. So screening will be done in the first two weeks of February. So you have to now, now to the end of the year, to register. What will now happen is if you don't qualify for the 400, we'll now send you a link to join us on Zoom. Online. Okay. Oh. So it's not going to be on Facebook, it's not going to be on yeah. any public. So no domain. man left behind. Pay the 15,000. No, 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 that's Maybe not the 15,000. That one is different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the this free one for the kingdom, for the, uh, the kingdom okay. with myself and Joshua Selman is free. Right. Yeah. We have over 6,000 people there. So when you register, we we'll screen you. If we say, okay, this one should come, we we'll now send the well, message. Well, if you pay for the $1,000, you have access to that one too. So yeah. if you have access, that one yeah. is free for everybody yeah. coming. But that so. one too is limited time. Of course, the, the 20th. Yeah, 20th. Yeah, by choice. So even by 20th, you have not paid. You pay 2,000, and yeah. then we can now be removing the free people to be slotting you in. Mm. Uh, so, so that's the, so. So and then they can call the phone number 0809-144-7423. So 0809-144-7423. Okay, okay or, or the why does, it, why does a career person need this? Oh, you see, do you know that? In the levels of wealth, there are five levels. There is financial crisis, which is where a lot of people operate. There is financial instability. Mm. There is financial stability, which is where a lot of career people operate. You are stable, you have a job, your income mm. is coming, mm. you have a car, you have a house, you can travel, you're still in private school. But that is the most deceptive level. Wow. Because in financial stability, you are deceived to think that you are okay, but you are not. Mm. Because once you lose your job in 90 days, you are a poor man. Yeah. So many of them don't realize that even though they think they are financially stable, it's a deceptive stability because all the things that makes you stable is dependent on your salary. Mm. It's dependent on your job. So the day you lose that job, you okay. don't have any asset that produces cash flow for you. You don't have any investment that is producing cash flow for you. So that is why you need to come so that we can help put your life in order. You know the amazing thing about this book? I wanted to bring in a lot of people. I said, ah, this one will come become like a psychopedia. So what I did <laughs> is I brought 16 people Okay. that I have trained, that are career people, that are still career people, okay. civil servants, medical doctor, lawyer, uh, every all kinds, and they are wealthy today, and they are still in their career. They didn't steal, they didn't deceive anybody, and they grew their, so they now share. So we have 16 contributors mm. sharing their journey, their CV, how they joined the bank, how they grew, how they got this one, when they got this money, how they bought this land for 300, how they kept it, they did all, all the steps, and they told us their assets. Mm. This is what I now have because mm. of this. That's why they, how did you meet a little bit What did it teach you? Yeah, what did yeah. you practice? What is the result? How long did it take you? Everything is in the book. Let me tell you, I don't yeah. know what later want to jump in. Let me tell you something that Tokwe said about you behind your back. She said that one thing she likes about you is that you're not fluff. You're the real deal. That there's a lot of fluffiness. Everybody just, okay. let, let me speak, they just come up with branding and say all these nice, nice things. Mm. But when you now get inside, you're like, wait, there's nothing there. But mm. Dr. Lumino now is the real deal. So that's why we appreciate you. We bring you all the time because we hope that indeed people will learn mm. and can help Nigerians get out of, out poverty. of poverty. We have been privileged to have done that. We've raised over 6,000 millionaires in this country. Mm. Wow. People that were like as in nothing. Nothing. If you read the School of Money book, these are real things yeah. because 
of, of course, you know the story of Tokwe. In less than three years, you yeah. see what, what has happened. And she's not the only one. There are a lot of people like that because, you see, once you know what to do, yeah. a lot of Nigerians are hardworking. But see, if you are hard working in the wrong direction, you will not arrive at your destination. All you need is just somebody to guide you. Do you know how much people have spent in December just to do all the things they have oh, done? Exactly. Do you know that you can buy a plot of land now and in five years' time, in ten years' time, you will be wondering, how did I get here? So many of us that people are looking at is what we practice. That we are, I bought land in the Korodu in 2001, 50,000 50, naira. Mm -hmm. I, brought, I bought 150 acres. It took me three years to pay. Now, 20, 20, 23 years later, the land is still there. How many people will wait for 23 years? Mm. But the land I bought for 50,000 is no more 50,000. And it's sitting down there. Then I say, how do these people become billionaires? All these pastors. They don't know the secret. And we say, come, let's show you. Mm. So that you so anyone that's listening to me right now, this is the year, but no one will help you if you don't help yourself. Mm. So with just $1,000, you can be a part of this two days event. And if you know Tara, my God, if you know, you know, there are some women, the Bukwaushikas of this world, the Taz, these are people within our network. And there are people that have built legitimate wealth by offering products and services over time. Mm -hmm. Come people. and learn. So get those phone numbers, call the number, go to the website, anyone that you can fit into. If it's only book you want to buy, you buy a book, you start from there. Everybody goes through a process. Yeah. It's not a uh, gri, 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 gri. It may take you one year, five years, yeah. seven years, just start the journey. We need and to wrap up. It will be Thank an amazing so much, opportunity. Sir. So for those of you that want the, um, the 50 slots from the Yeah, 50 show, slots for the Entrepreneurship for only, Academy. Yes, yeah. so we'll get the details, but for you to be to qualify, you must first of all follow our handles yeah. at the ladies of, of your, your view. view. Um, at TVC Entertainment underscore and TVC Events Diary. Those three handles, once you follow it, you qualify. And yes, we'll see so. so those three handles, the ladies of your view, um, TVC Entertainment underscore and TVC Events Diary. Those three handles, please follow them. Take a picture that you follow them and then tell us that, yes, I follow you. Please, I want access to Dr. Lumides and then we'll give you the 50 stars. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we continue with our show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table.
come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, multiple award-winning actor, producer, ambassador of Edo people, we have Etinosa Idemudia in the building. <laughs> don't be first to go police station, they win the case. Is so she? you don't, you are showing no, yourself. I go, I go see as my second you question. You are feeling like a, a contact the prancing peacock. I'm about to cut your wings. Hello? Now, in the amalgamation of 1914, who was the woman who that. said, who drew the line of the amalgamation? The, who, who, cut, who cut the report? Who is the person that used to What is his name? That woman. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> ah, ah. Hey, you have done me dirty. I've marked your face. I've marked your face if anything happened to me today. I don't, I don't if I don't reach my house. Anyway, I'm going to be shuffled, so. Mm. You remember now, Avi? Eh? <laughs> yeah, but you never too thin, man. Um, now you remember. Hey. If a person who indulges habitually in watching a sexual material is called a voyeur. That's what I'm called. <laughs> you clearly don't even get the hey, next one. Hey, hey, a voyeur. A voyeur. Then go on. What is a person who makes one? A voyeur. <laughs> a voyage. A bon voyage. Not just where, but who wouldn't you want to work with? Yes, that's on that angle. So, like, if I had a very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to work with who? Not the There's respect. no judgment. No, and I respect, oh, don't judge you I respect but we won't this judge you. certain type of people. But what I dislike so much is when they, they tend to come to work and then they pour all their resentment on them. you. Is it me that offended you? <laughs> I'm not the one. I have no business. My just come out with you, pay me at the end of the month, and let me go back to my house in peace and sleep. But when it comes to like divorced people, I cannot work with a divorcee. I can't see myself doing that. If I find out, if you can hide this one, but if I find out, when they are nice divorcees, I would just. What if be they are nice? Okay, now it depends. If you are nice, cool. But if you are the type that you don't know how to keep your anger to yourself. You always you always pour it on somebody. Well, I'll just drop my resignation letter. No matter the amount you're paying me. So you're <laughs> more passive aggressive people. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. Oh, definitely. And I cannot work with stingy people. <laughs> ah, see this one. Because you cannot be passing me in the morning afternoon. I can say, oh, ah, yeah, I'm okay. Oh yeah, take hundred naira. Take ten k. Take fifteen k. Hey, don't, you don't have to be my sugar daddy time. or sugar mommy. What, what, see, the way you treat others is the way they will treat you outside. Yeah. And if you cannot treat your workers well, they are not a good boss. If you cannot be dashing me small, small thing or giving me donuts when I'm when I'm working, they are not a good boss. <laughs>
Thanks for staying with us. Three students of the Federal Government College Ijani King have been placed on indefinite suspension because their parents took the Parent Teachers Association PTA of the school to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Join us on the show are the parents of suspected students and the PTA, suspended students actually, and the PTA chairman of the school. Um, you can join the conversation a bit later on 081-0764-1679-0902-416340. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. Join us on, in the studio right now. It's one of the parents of which we have, we have two others waiting, but uh, we're gonna have, we have with us Mrs. Falila at Ulushogbon. Welcome to the show, madam. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you. <laughs> so the story we got, the report we have is that your child was suspended by the school because um, the PTA was taken to was reported to the EFCC. Yes, yes. Could you give us an idea the origin of the gender, how this started in the first place? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, it started um, 2022 when we had um, the annual general meeting and they presented the financial report to us. Um, well. We got there, we saw lots of discrepancies, which I raised with other parents. And um, at that point, there was no response. The principal, who is the representative of the uh, Ministry of Education, was present, and others were there. But each time we asked the question, they, they, they were not giving us the answer. We saw something like the salary increase of um, like 23 million, and the... Um, PTA chairman claimed there was no um, um, recruitment that year. So the drastic increase from the previous one that we saw, 18 million, which was 2021, and now we are seeing 42 million. What's that? They bought, they bought a bus, 7.4 million, without any approval from the house. Mm. Lots of things like that we saw, um, sitting allowance of close to 1 million plus. Who had the people sitting and collecting this money. Wow. When our children are there, they are having some lapses somewhere. Yet, on resumption day, they requested us to prepare fee of 500 naira per head. Whereas in the PTA a financial report, it is stated prefi, which was a, 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 a motivational fee agreed by we parents for teachers. Yet, they still collect on resumption day 500 naira Things like that we saw, even in the financial report, I saw, we saw sport fee expenses, they made close to a million plus, yet on resumption day we pay 500 naira per head, yet and in the uh, school bill there is a 1,000 naira per child every time for sport. So we are like, why all these um, duplications of um, funds? Well, we have other things, we can even, the PTA is set aside for um, support, but if we are spending this much on this area, how are we going to take care of our children? Those were the questions we raised. The account was, we parents raised alarm, saying they don't want to adopt the account that day. Well, before you know it, the parents stood up, adopted it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we went back to the house, we uh, raised the question, we brought out all the uh, questions in the platform. I, we alighted everything, myself and some other parents. Before you know it, they deleted all the messages. We were removed from the platform. Wow. Totally. They removed all of Those us. three of you? Most, we were like um, 10. Okay. We were like 10. We started this, but, you know, as time goes on, yeah. we get exactly, some were getting pressure, you understand. But at least this, we are now four, not even three. We are four now. One of us, the child passed out last year, mm. luckily, yes. mm -hmm. luckily, luckily. Then the other, the other three were... Still here, mm. one of them is still at home. Last section, the boy was unable to get his um, because first they blocked all our portals, the children's portals. We were unable to generate um, bills, we were unable to even see their profession, uh, their promotional results. Mm -hmm. And before that, yes, the, that time ends that was their SS to my son, and the other one that was in SS1. We were called to come and remove our children from school. Till EFCC matter is over. We were like, when, when, when did he get to EFCC? Because you told us. Uh, yeah, uh, well, okay, sorry. When we were uh, dragging this thing and we were removed from the platform, the 
principal was there, who is representing the FME. She said nothing about it. We kept asking questions. This matter will go beyond the way you want it if you are not giving us answer because this is a public fund. Yes. It's a public fund. But if the PTA chairman said it, we can go to hell, do whatever we like. The PTA wow. chairman. Yes, he said so. Mm -hmm. So that was there since we are told to go to hell, do whatever we like, so we have to do whatever. So it took you, would you say, three months before you got to EFC? No, it, to it took us, like, say, let's say four, four months. Okay. okay, so why the EFCC? I understand it's financial misappropriation, yes. but the um, federal FGC Janiki is under the federal ministry. Yeah. This college had such drama in the past, and it was the minister for education that was overseeing those issues. So why not the federal ministry of education? We wrote to federal ministry of education. We made some calls, but we're not getting any response. Even at that point when we went to EFCC, thinking at least that phone was shaking them, she you understand, to even do something. But they were in, so we had to. We've been writing letter to the Ministry of Education, but they. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Not in that the new minister. Nothing has happened. Office. Even when the new minister came on board, two weeks after he resumed office, he did another letter. That was after the case was at the EFCC. We still made an effort for the new minister to know what is happening, that they should just come to our head and. Sorry, I need to understand. Wait, how long has your children been suspended? Since 2022 or this no, last, no. just last year? Then the, the portal was blocked in 2023. The third time result up to now, we have not seen it. Their promotion and exam. That was last year. That was last year. Mm -hmm. Because we were called to come and remove them from the exam class. And we were like, no. There is a voice note mm -hmm. to that. And we were like, we have to. I said, sorry, if you disturb my child emotionally, in that promotional exam, I'm going to sue all of you in that. Fees were paid for these children? Yes. yes. Complete. We paid. Okay. But unfortunately, um, after that, uh, one, uh, when the promotional, when they resumed, that was uh, September. Mm. One of them could not resume up till now. Because his butter is, his butter is blocked, okay. that he can't assess his um, promotional exam to even, even go and enroll in another school. No, without that, you can't move right. ahead. Mm. So we've been writing letters. We, when the new principal even came in on board, we quickly wrote a letter to let him know that this is the situation on Grando. We would like to have our uh, results. Uh, results, and the portal should be unblocked. So why can't the school okay, let, me, let, let me pause you for a second, because I would like to bring in the PTA chairman. So we have with us also in the studio um, the PTA chairman, Comrade Shola Tukede. He's uh, which we try to also get the principal, Dr. Kendi, to be part of this discussion, but unfortunately, um, the person didn't, the, uh, didn't show up. Uh, Dr. Kendi is a female or male? Male. male. So he didn't show up, but we have here with us in the studio, um, Comrade Sholatuke, the PTA chairman. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, uh, Morayo. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, so the MTC was supposed to be for Dr. Kendi, but he couldn't show up, but we'll have to just talk to the PTA. So here are some allegations that have been made so far. You've heard... Mrs. Um, Olushagbon speaking earlier, and um, she made some really grievous allegations against the PTA. So could you give us your own version of what happened? Of what happened? Yes. <clears throat> the principal sent his apologies. He couldn't come because of the fact that he's a civil servant. And it, as a civil servant in the ministry, he needs the permission of his permanent secretary before he could do such interviews. OK. So that was what happened. Uh, well. I give God the glory for a day like this. Mm -hmm. I came here not to be talking about EFCC case or suspension per se, because I don't manage the school. I just happened to be a parent just like every other person. Okay. And I was privileged to be elected to be the PTA chairman. Of course, my responsibilities are to ensure that we support the school in all ramifications, whatever we could do, to try and bridge the gaps where the ministry couldn't, because we know the paucity of funds and everything here and there. So to collaborate with the school and assist them wherever there are lapses. We have been doing that since we came into office in uh, November 2021. We came into office. The genesis was very funny. The fact of the case is, I have the document here, after the election in uh, October, te October 31st, 2021, I won as the chairman. I contested with the one person. I won as the chairman with only one vote. The votes were counted four or five times, and it was a certain that actually won that election, and the man embraced me. Mr. Shogun sitting here, I wanted to contest as chairman too, but because the guideline was against her, only parents, biological parents of students in GSS classes are eligible to contest 
who has a three years tenure. So when she saw that her child was in SS1, she went to rent another child, claiming that that's her child, not knowing that the school have records of all the students in the files. So the electoral committee, they now brought out the file and saw that uh, the, the child she was claiming that uh, she's the biological parent is not our own biologically born child. And they asked the child, when they showed the picture to, is it your child? They said, no, it's my auntie. It's not my, my mother. So that was it. She was disqualified. Likewise, Mr. Douglas Dano, who wanted to go for a treasurer as well. Comrade. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're trying to focus on what happened concerning the allegations yeah. of the financial misappropriation she alleged. Yes, she I will get to... there, please. I okay. need to illustrate the genesis so okay, that I know sir. where we are coming from. Okay, oh, sir. Okay. So after the election, we started working. We, the grand runner, as they normally say, because there are so many gaps to be filled. That assisted the school. We did uh, electrical repairs and many other things there that uh, to make our children comfortable. That's our essence of being there anyway. And before we knew it, we got a letter from the Federal Ministry of Education that some parents, there's really two of them, who were disqualified from contesting the petition against the election that we had, then unjust disqualification of their candidacy. And the PTA, sorry, the Federal Ministry of Education now wrote us eventually that uh, they didn't see anything wrong in the election that was conducted because there are guidelines that were followed and their representatives were there. Three directors actually came from the Federal Ministry of Education. That's what they do. When uh, university colleges are having an election, they came, they corrected the election anyway, and they informed them via letter. I came with copies of that letter that they gave to us that there's nothing wrong there, that their petition, there's no merit there. And we thought everything was finished. Yeah, we went to contest for an election, and uh, God made it in this situation, we couldn't. I think we should let life go on. But unfortunately, it wasn't like that. Yeah, we had a pretty um, meeting, annual general meeting. I think um, we had it in uh, July or thereabout before we go for third term. That was in uh, 2022. But the financial year was running then from June to May. So we had it in uh, July before they went for long vacation. And that was what happened. After the, the thing was done, after the AGM was done, of course, she and a few of our, our courts, they are trying to prevent the AGM report, financial report from being passed. But parents stood against them, that what is all these things? Questions have been asked, they have explained to you, and they passed it anyway, like she rightly admitted. And so that was sir, it. Please, I'd like you to help us confirm when they raised the questions of misappropriation of funds, or just asking how the funds were spent, yes. was there a proper explanation to what was done with the money? Of first course. Of, of course. We made an mm -hmm. explanation. What they wanted was that we should be putting everything. After the AGM that the account has been passed, approved, they now went to the platform. But we have a platform to get feedback from parents, what is happening to their children, and whatever they think. We get feedback every now and then. They said we should post it. On the platform, I said, no, the PTA is not wrong on social media. There's a circular from the Federal Ministry of Education that the school should not be run on social media. Nobody should even take the school to any of the social media, either newspaper or TV houses, without going through the gamut of the procedures when you have uh, reservations. The guideline is very clear. When you have reservations, you are free. Right to the chairman to explain some things to you. If he refuses, go to the principal. The principal will call the parties to try and see what has been happening. And if you are not satisfied, you insist that you want it to be sent. You write a letter to the federal ministry. And the principal is obliged to pass your petition to the federal ministry of education. <laughs> Can you let me ask it. a question, sir? Yes, please. So um, if this is now done, does it mean the platform, I believe that's a WhatsApp platform. Yes, no, it's a Telegram. We change it to oh, Telegram okay. because of many students, yes. Okay, yes, good. So does it mean that, you know, there are punitive measures against the parents who comes on that platform to ask such questions such that they will be removed? They were never removed. They were mooted. When it became persistent, they were trying to disparage the school and the PTA. <laughs> So they were okay. muted. They are seeing postings. Comrade, right, follow-up question quickly, sir. Yes, ma'am. Please confirm yeah, yeah. the students that, you know, were suspended pending the EFCC investigation. Yes. I'm, uh, are they also part of the parents' meeting? No, meeting? they were not. They were they are not. They students whose school fees have been paid. Yeah. So uh, why well, the suspension, sir? No. Um, they've not paid school fees this time. The suspension started this time, as I'm aware. 
And I, I can't even comment much on it because I'm not the, I don't run the school. I'm not the school management. I came here basically to just put a stop to the lies being peddled all over the world. You understand? Just to trade the genesis so that people of discerning minds, they can make up their mind on what is happening. And but be an comrade, activist. Uh, com comrade, yeah. yes. is, were you aware of the suspension of these students? Children, yes. Mm. Yeah, when, she, when this came, I saw it on TVC News. So how did you step in? Because your job as a P PTA, a Parents man. Teachers Association, mm -hmm. is to first of all protect the children in the school, the students in the school, and also mm -hmm. give aid to the school. So how did you step in when you heard of course. that students who were innocent of whatever happened within the group mm -hmm. were suspended? I stepped in. Okay. I, saw, I saw the past principal, what really happened, and she showed me a circular. There was a circular from the ministry that if you take the school or the PTA or any subsidiary of the school to the court, or you make it impossible for them to function optimally in their offices without passing through the processes like I highlighted earlier, of course, you are going to be sanctioned about that. So I was aware that happened to them. And uh, all effort to make our reason has failed, and we left it. Mm. Let the FCC take its course. Let's see what happens. And uh, so, okay. while are you, may I ask, please, may I ask, um, are you also um, th this punitive measure? Does it also affect the child who is unable to access, um, so that they can even move to another school? Um, I'm not aware of that. Or she's saying that now. But all said and done, like I told you. There were procedures that were not followed. Okay, let me pause you for a second because I'd like you to respond to what he said so far. Mm -hmm. I have two more parents who are waiting to talk, so I'll bring them in in a minute. But let me get your own response to what he said so far before we bring in the other parents. Yeah, um, for what he has said so far, <coughs> the election we have not, is that a reason why everybody has a badge for a position? Yes. And if you are hurt, you are hurt. Okay. So it's not a matter of, um, we have moved on. We have moved on. So why is this still bringing the issue of election to every matter we discuss? Is that the reason why the money was embezzled? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Why? We, if you keep talking about election, that's a done deal. It's done. Mm -hmm. I never contested. None of us ever contested that we were screwed not fine. No problem. But that does not mean for all the allegations that I went to even stole a child or something like that. It's my niece. It's <laughs> such... And I have evidence for that. So it's just a story they keep, kept bringing up. And That's I, even a done issue. I'm saying in our business. if after elections have happened and ended, there's a notice of any financial misappropriation, yes. so that's wrong to question it. So we, we, that's what so we Let question. me ask a question. Yeah. Was there an official response from the PTA to those, those allegations that, of this financial misappropriation? They never or, gave any response. What, 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 okay, what was the response they gave, at least to give you? What, what exactly was well said? Because he's, he's explaining that they explained to you already. They didn't explain anything. Like, okay, like the salary now, when we had, yes. they we claimed there were no increase in staffs. They didn't uh, recruit any staff that year. So the question was, how come we have this? Can we have the staff list? Can we have all that? Which was never provided. He said you didn't write a formal letter. He said that the, fo the uh, yeah, platform where the questions were raised is not the official one. Now he wanted a letter. So did they, it, it did you did. later write a letter? That we were the not letter supposed to write. At the AGM, you ask questions. When you see a financial report, you pick up all the figures, the discrepancies. For clarity. Raise it. Yes, for clarity. That is what we are supposed to not even write any letter to that effect. But while we were asking that question, they kept saying, they, they've given us a figure. And, you and you should take the figure and move. Yes. And you were muted. We were not yeah. muted, we were removed. And of, funny enough, they even deleted all the questions we raised. Okay. Even the last minute of meeting that was supposed to even show that the, uh, the events of that day, they removed everything, <laughs> not just mine, everybody. Because when they read the, the next uh, PTA meeting, when they were reading out the minutes of meeting, there was nothing like okay. I think we discussed the financial report. So, could you just help confirm if there are other official conversations that happened on that telegram group before this no, no, no. you guys you discussed official discuss matters official matters on the group yeah. were questions it, being okay asked ask? mm. we were just asking questions on all no, this no no, no yeah. before yeah. this issue so before, okay, before this, this issue, issue mm. what would you use the telegram group before. for no the telegram group is for um children's welfare 
any question we have concerning anything we don't understand. Okay. Instead of driving down to school, but most parents are not in Lagos. Yeah. So that platform is meant for us to discuss, okay. to get information, get information mm -hmm. and the school representative plus the PTA get back to us through that platform. So it's not uncommon for parents to mm -hmm. raise issues. No, 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 no. Let That's me go on a short break. When I come for. back, we're going to bring in another parent to join the conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni, Yeni, Anikula Pokuti, aka... Thanks for staying with us. We're still on this Ijani Kimata and we're having another parent join the conversation, Mr. Payo Soje. He's also one of the petitioners. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Good morning. You've been, I'm sure you've been listening into all the conversation. Could you give us an idea of your own um, angle to this? Because we understand very clearly that your own child was not suspended. Um, but, but tell us what happened from your own end. From your okay. Understanding. okay. Um, fortunately for me, uh, my child has graduated. But this uh, issue uh, arose sometime in 2022. Now, I just want to give a short, a very clear analysis of what has happened. Now, in the PTA, we have a Telegram platform. That Telegram platform has the chairman and other parents. Now, it also has teachers in that platform. Mm -hmm. 
Now it has the principal who represent the Federal Ministry of Education on that platform. Mm -hmm. okay. So when we wanted to have this AGM, we requested for the accounts. I requested. I, we kept on asking, give us the account. Let us know what we are coming to meet at the AGM. The PTA refused. I say that without bias. The PTA refused. Now, on the day of the AGM, they threw a figure at us. And my position was that, please, you cannot ask me to adopt expenses that I have not seen. Of course, they did whatever they wanted to do. They adopted and they sent out the uh, audited account. So on that audited account, we came back to the platform. Now, like I said earlier, that platform has representative of everybody, both the Federal Ministry of Education. We came back to the platform and we raised issues. First, we raised the issue of salary increase because the PTA has said there was no new recruitment and there was no increase in salary. So we ask, how did this money move? We also raised the issue of debtors which became outrageous. We raised the issue of prep dues. Now, on that audited account, the, there is a provision. The PTA had agreed that to support the school and the teachers who go extra time to uh, supervise the children at the prep, PTA should take out money from the dues we have collected and give to the school to support the the teachers. Now we discover that when we started, when we resumed, they asked us to pay 500 naira per parent, per child for prep. So we paid. Now when we now saw this auditor, uh, this account, we now ask, we have paid 500 naira per child. How come the PTA is still spending that huge amount of money for the prep? You can't have two expenses for prep. Please give us explanation. We also raised the issue of religious due, 500 naira per child. We raised the issue of sports, 500 naira per child. We raised these issues. And to be very sincere to everybody, what we ask is explain. Give us explanation. If the PTA had come to say, say sorry, um, that 500 naira, the money from the PTA, um, allocation was not enough. So we said we should uh, add to it. Uh, we were not able to meet before we raised that amount. Well and good. No explanation. Now, parents started raising the issue that if explanation is not given, this matter will be escalated. I personally remember, recall clearly, what I said that day on that platform. I said, please, respond to these allegations. Because if they bring these allegations before the regulatory body like EFCC, you can't explain. Explain these allegations now. First, I was muted. Immediately I said that. Then secondly, I was removed from the platform. So after that, they, 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 they went on and said, well, we can do whatever we want to do. So I told myself that, look, if the platform where the principal that represents the Federal Ministry of Education is, other teachers are there. The principal who represents the Federal Ministry of Education cannot call the PTA chairman and say, look, explain these figures to these people. They have a right because I pay Jews. They have a right. Explain these figures to these people. Mr. Sojay. Sir. Let, yes. me, let, let me come in here for a second because... Okay. In, 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 uh, in a democracy, they say it's um, usually the majority carries yes, the vote. Yes, and yes. so if you're in a meeting, an AGM, where, um, as you said, questions were raised, and according to the comrade who sits next to you, you said, we explained some of these things. Yeah, maybe it wasn't acceptable to everybody. But if majority had said, we are okay with the books, please go ahead and pass it. When three people or four parents now say, oh, we object, and because of that, we're going to bring it to the platform, do you think it was appropriate for us to, for you to have brought it into the platform? or found a way at the AGM to raise and insist that it shouldn't be passed 
until all of you there was a consensus, don't you think? There was not, let me just clear, there was not an issue of majority agreeing. Okay. Now, look, what happened at the, uh, the AGM is this. When we raised the issue, it, becomes very rowdy, it became very rowdy. Of course, we all know what happens in this kind of situation. Somebody was called upon, and the person stood up and said, I adopt. And that person was called upon, and the person said, I support. It's not as if it was put to vote whether we should adopt or we should not adopt. Mm -hmm. They called one person. Of course, I'm not the person who will uh, call the people who will adopt. Those of them at the high table, the chairman and others, just pointed at somebody. The person raised up his hand and said, yes, I adopt. Another person, yes, I, sub I, I second. So if you ask me clearly, that thing was done by two people. It was not put to vote. Let me let Comrade respond to you. He's sitting next to you. Comrade, you've heard Mr. Soja. Um, um, <coughs> Mr. Soja, yes. Mr. Soja, yes. Mr. Soja, yes. Make his next question. Please um, try to respond Thank to you. this. Thank yes. you. Oh, you see, all these lies will never help anybody. <laughs> when we have meetings, I'm happy you said it, that the minority will have a say and the majority will have their way. That day, when they wanted to disrupt the meeting after we have uh, explained everything, we now call for motions. Somebody stood up and then moved the motion for the adoption. Somebody seconded, and specifically to God who made me. As of counter motion, they couldn't move it. Because it was clear to them they are going to lose. They didn't move anything, so it was adopted. And on the AFCC's case, said we have embezzled or we have misappropriated 80 million error. As at the time they petitioned the AFCC, all the income that came in were not even up to 80 million error. It's in the public domain of the AFCC. We pay staff salary of three, about 3.5 million error every month. And I want to imagine, even by the time they, they petitioned, when you look at the salary we have paid, and all the interventions we have made in school, in the school, we see that all the other were laws, they couldn't support it, of course. At the end of the day, it will come to nothing. My only, my only concern now is innocent child. That is a little short boss, uh, boy, very brilliant boy, who would have even been senior prefect yeah. anyway. Come but on, you can see. Come on, Shala, you, you can't say you're concerned about the school. I am, I am. No, 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 sir. Sir, At this time, please. At this time um, you, you would have stepped in. You would have um, you know, found a way to explain to the school that the activities of the PTA should not affect the students. That's what is supposed to be your job as the chairman in the first place. So you can't sit here and say that um, you are feeling for the child when this child is not allowed. He's His name so, was taken so away from people who are going to be writing YEC. Wow. If this child was your child and was suspended, yes. would you sit down and say... You, you, you feel concerned about the child? Or would you have done something about it? <coughs> they came in. They came into the school because of their children. If their children are not in the school, they would have been part of the school. You understand? So I explained this to you. Of course, we met at the DFC's office sometimes, and uh, something they asked us to do informal discussion among ourselves. She knew what they told her about the petition itself, okay. but I don't want to dabble into it. You know, time will vindicate everybody. We know who is guilty and who is not. Time. Sir, you sir, you didn't answer my question. You are saying they came into the school because of the children. So should the innocent children suffer for what is going on in the PTA? I just want to get that clarity. No, it's, it's unfortunate. Like I said, you understand? It's unfortunate. Because uh, that's, the lawyer is beside me here, and I have an element of law mm. in me as well. Anyway. That's what we call vicarious liability. You understand? Ah, that is what she has, she has uh, brought. For a child, because the the ministry, the ministries, whatever, is very clear about it. You know, Comrade. there are processes to follow. You didn't follow the process. You know, Comrade. yes, please. In our country, where we are promoting education for all children, oh. vicarious liability extends to somebody's child in a school where fees are paid, and you said the child is an exemplary child. Fees were not paid. Are you paid. saying a lawyer advised? Fees were not paid. They've not paid fees for this term. And because they were not paid for payment now before the fees. They, they were allowed them to, to pay any education. fees. In a school, they were enrolled from just one to SS2. Yes. September, that child did not do first term. You sit comfortably and said vicarious liability extends to a child from their parents' actions. The child did first term. I can't term. understand you. The just child a did moment. first term. Another thing I want to ask, because help me with an AGM again. So you raise an issue of one, two, three naira at an AGM. Yes. Please. Everybody do not agree. But then two, three people are voting and saying, I, I, I adopt, I, I concur, and all of that. 
And does it mean that that corruption has, has wiped out the paper until you answer with the figures and facts about how numbers were missing? I, I'm answering to the FCC, ma. All the documents, relevant documents, have been submitted. Why, why the FCC is yes. investigating? The child should be in school. I don't understand. Children. But I've just told you the circular from the ministry. I don't run the school. I wish I the don't. Ministry of Education is here. I don't here. run I the school. I want to see the Federal Ministry of Education come and justify how they are promoting child education compulsorily in Nigeria by removing a child, suspending a child for same. When in second term, second week, uh, first please, week or second term. Please, ma. Please, please ma. Please. On the issue of uh, money being collected, the school collected money. I don't know why they are banning with the PTA. The five hundred they are they are, they are talking the about. The school collects, not the PTA. They didn't pay through the PTA. Can, 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 can I can I can I come in, please? Come in, please. Okay. Can yes, I come go in, ahead, please? Mr. Pyles. Yes. You see, when this discussion started, I really didn't want to introduce myself as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I heard comrades say that there was a, he raised an issue of counter motion, and nobody could move counter motion. Yes. Please, if anybody could move a motion, Thank you. it's a lawyer. What's wrong with the body? Because <laughs> I am. I, that is my calling. So my concern in this issue is that, unfortunately, the Federal Ministry of Education is not here. My concern here is this. Just as has been said, if there, there are issues in the account, there are issues in the account. And I heard comrades say that, we did, that they did not follow proper procedure. I really want to correct that wrong impression. Now, like I said from the onset, that platform has the, the, the principal, who is a director, representing the Federal Ministry of Education. They have teachers. <sighs> if I raise a complaint on that platform where the FME is adequately represented, and somebody comes to say that I have not raised a proper platform, Am I supposed to carry a placard and go to the minister's office and say, this is what I am saying? Yeah. The principal is there. He, she represents the, <laughs> the Federal Ministry of Education. And I have raised issue on the platform. What stops the principal? That is because I'm asking, what stops the principal, who is representing the Federal Ministry of Education, from saying, please, Mr. Chairman, this is a PTA issue. The parents are PTA members. They have paid their dues. Can you just explain what happened here to them? And that ends it. Finish. Then they turn around. They turn around. I'm sure if my son was, had not graduated, they would have done the same thing. They turn around and come to say that a child is suspended because of a petition pending at EFCC. A child... Hey. A child is suspended because parents complain that, look, EFCC come and investigate this financial problem. So a child who is going to write, who is supposed to write SSC, has been suspended. Funny enough is that that child cannot enroll in any other school. He cannot enroll in any other school. Can I ask, can I ask um, um, comrade, please? Yes. Um, could you <clears throat> help me see what I'm seeing? Like, there's a conflict of interest here. You are the chairman of the Parents Teachers Association. Yes. You are meant to represent yes. parents as well, the interests of the parents and their children in the school. Now a child who you've agreed, you know, shouldn't be sent out of school, has been sent out of school, and you haven't done your job in protecting that child. Do you think you should still be the chairman? Because in this case, it seems that, you know, there are conflicting interests right now. Would you just rather maybe align with the school right now? And we have yet to hear anyone say they have received something tangible f we, uh, from you or from the PTA showing how this money was spent. Thank you. You are aware that we had an idea where we explained everything. They asked questions and the account was certified correct. So if some group of parents after now rabble up and up and down, it doesn't bother me again. Their account has been passed. You understand? And when they went to the EFCC, fine. Are you aware they went to court too? They took the school to court. Sure. It's still pending here. Are you, you working for the school, comrade? I'm not. I'm Are you working telling, for the school? See, I will tell you the way I feel. I can't be, you know, you, you need to give room to both parties to yes. hear their opinions. Right. Go ahead. Go yes. ahead. So I'm saying, in essence, are you aware of that which is against the Federal Ministry of Education that holds this school? 
It's not a private school. It's a public school owned by the Federal Ministry of Education, and they regulate it, our conduct and everything. So if you, out of your own volition, decided to go against those guidelines, well, you should be ready. I, to... I, have, I have a question, comrade, for you. But yes. I mean, this might not even be pertaining to the case, but I'm just trying to wrap around my brain. Why are parents paying school fees? I don't understand it. Maybe this is already an indictment on the federal government on itself. Why is the PTA the one collecting funds to pay teachers? I have an issue with that. I don't understand. We don't. They don't you see, the ministry, they have more than 200 uh, teachers in that school. It's a big school, relatively. Okay. Our own issue, they are not recruiting the federal government. So in areas, subject areas that there are lapses, now they come to the PTA to employ those teachers. Of course, we give them patterns compared to what the ministry pays. But just to fill that gap, that's what we always be doing. The lady sitting there, is, uh, I don't know, we say, oh, don't employ more teachers, don't do this, don't increase salary, even in this situation of things, that things are like this. You see, it's only God that is perfect. And they know that we don't have any skeleton in our cupboard. We are not afraid of anything. That's why we took everything to the FCC. Mm. The case in court, there was a circular from the ministry that any parent that takes the the school or PT or anything to court without resolving it internally, this child should be suspended till the issue is resolved either in court or with the EFCC. It's very clear about that. As, uh, like I said before, I'm an activist and I know what it is. I am a human rights crusader. Maybe. But my hands are tied here, I definitely. Like, I like that you mentioned. Eh? So you say, you're saying categorically that there's a rule of the federal. Law, federal Ministry of Education, yes. Federal Ministry of Education yes, has a punitive please. rule if a parent were to raise an issue in court yes. over their against child. Yes. child yes. Against the child. In or it is resolved, the child should not okay, be in the so school. That's, I'm, I'm going to wait for the Federal Ministry of Education to respond. Okay. Also, you said that at the AGM, yes. the financial misappropriation was answered. It was yes. cleared and certified. Cleared and now the account by approved. Who, by who? You said? By who? who by parents. It? When we ask for motion and counter, you know when there are dis disagreements like that, to solve it, you ask for motions and counter motions. That was so what I did. Motions and counter motions yes, clear please. figure, figures, uh, miscalculations. No. So the yes, person please. just raises a motion and says, it's not two naira, it's five naira. Please. And the person counters the motion and says, no, it's three naira. Failure to counter clears the. No, 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 no. Motion. They raise questions and we explain oh, yeah. those they are. We are not clear about Do you have books uh, about monies paid? Because, you know, when monies are paid, there should be books. Of paid. course, of course. Okay, so did you, publicly, said? did you make the books public? You said? Did you make your books public? Yes, yeah, in read? the accounts, of course. In the accounts. And when they how much came let, me, let me get Mr. Pyros to confirm. Let me get me. Mr. Pyros, he said that they made the books available. Did, did, you, did you receive it? Let me also come to you, ma'am. Yes. Did you get the books? No, no, no. no. You didn't get no, it? No books. Mr. Pyros, no. there, there, is, there is no book. You see, I, I really... There is no book. I mean, for crying out loud, what I have said and I will keep saying is this. Fortunately, you see, when this issue comes up, they raise election. But for me, by your soji, nobody could raise issue of election about me. So that is clear. The question I've always asked, Oga, I pay dues, PTA dues, every term. Please give me the explanation. Okay. Now, now well, I ask this question. If I ask for explanation, why will you remove me from the platform for so asking for an explanation? A man, a man who, if it is clear, today now if he accuse me that I have stolen money and I know that I did not do anything, I will tell you, these are the figures. Take. I, I will place it on the platform everywhere. Copy to anybody. Just yeah. go and confirm. Well, well, if you, I have to go on a break because I have one more parent in the studio that needs to come in. So let's go on a short break. We're going to come back. We're bringing the third parent. Now step down, Mr. Lisha. Come stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Pioneer Positive Force member, dancing queen of the 80s, non-conformist, Afrobeat historian in her right, and long-standing member of the multiple award-winning all-female show, Your View, Omoyeni. Yeni and if we for Kuti, aka Yay! YK Power. Ginger, today, today we go here. Hey, hmm. I don't read you. Are you sure? Ha. Hmm. I know I'm not here to answer questions. I have to drink. <laughs> We're in trouble today. <laughs> ah, wait, wait till your age. I was close now. <laughs> <laughs> 
He said 73. He said 75. Fernando House wasn't even burnt in 75. So, will I drink out? Eh? You go drink out. Take, take, take. Make a, make a help you. Rush on, rush on, rush on. No, be half. Eh? Which half? <laughs> you will make me drink. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Uh, light in, in no. Nepa, Nepa Road. Ah! <laughs> Nepa oh. Road. Nepa Road. In a Ah ah. First of all, my brain cannot uh, memorize everything. A big black bug. A big black dog. Bug. A big black bug. Oh, sorry. A big. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts. Omo ah eh. Omi omo fella. Omi omo anikula kpokuti. Oh no, baby, can you kick it? It's by your song, it's not by your song. Seven of seven, my name is OJ, and signing a severity into my hands tonight on the social experiment called the seven of seven is Owen. G Thanks for staying with us. We have the final pair of parents here, Mr. Daniel Dano. Welcome, Douglas Dano. Good to have you, sir. Uh, I also have a caller waiting, Mrs. Ifama. Let me let you say a few words before I bring in our final um, guest on this. Go ahead, please. Oh, I lost that call. Go ahead, Mr. Douglas. Tell us your own version. What happened? Was, was your child suspended? Oh, you're yeah, still on. I'm so sorry for my. I do apologize. Please say a few things. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. My first time calling. <laughs> yeah, I'll come to the show. Uh, so, um, concerning this, this case, this case um, um, concerning the Richard Ball and uh, her son out of school, is, um, I would say that I've been in somewhat similar situation when my daughter was in uh, Queen's College, Lagos. So, the thing is this first of all, that secularized claim comes from the ministry. What they, what they usually do is they will not circulate to parents. They keep it to themselves, so they use it as a weapon. Secondly, for meetings, AGM meetings, they usually will not find the financial documents ahead of time for parents to read, understand, and have questions ready for them on that day. They wouldn't do that. But instead, they will get parents who are kind of like um, supportive of their actions, mm. work with them to a meeting before the AGM and tell them, okay, you, we will call upon you to adopt the meeting, the minutes of the meeting, we will call on you to second the motion. And that is how these documents are adopted. Okay. They do not get the voice of the majority. I'm stating it clearly. These are issues I have fought from 2017, when children died in Queen's College, Lagos. The principal at that time was almost cutting off my throat to close out a WhatsApp group that I created for parents. Because we were always speaking against, against issues. How can you be in a school where you don't wash tank? Three water tanks that children drink from three, four years. Thank you very much, Mr. Vilma. I know, I know, I know you're very passionate about yeah. this, but and this is an issue that is that needs to be two or three shows. I have to let you go because I have to hear Mr. Douglas's uh, perspective on this. But thank you very much for sharing your own views. I think that gives us a clearer understanding of how these things go. But go ahead, sir. Let me let you. It was your own child suspended? Yes, it was. Okay. All right. I want to say that um, I want to come from a slightly different angle, please, because we have said so much about the PTA and all that. I'm just surprised that the representative of the school and probably the federal ministry to come and stand for what they claim to have uh, done rightly is not there. First of all, nobody took the federal government college anywhere, apart from one parent that decided to go to court. And in any case, the, the letter we saw from that the PTA chairman is claiming, we saw that letter about a year or so into this matter. Okay. It was not like we saw this letter before, even if we saw it. Personally, I felt this child has not committed any offense. Mm -hmm. The parents are not owing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing on ground to make these children 
bear responsibility for the actions of their parents. So start with the EFCC or the court. It's not a shrine. You don't kill people there. Mm. It's not where they poison people and yes. kill people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why it should be an offense for somebody to approach the court for an action that he considers wrong or the EFCC for financial matters. If you cannot go to the EFCC for financial matters, where can you go mm -hmm. for issues concerning financial misappropriation? Yeah. So nobody took the federal government college anywhere. Yeah. Not the principal, not the school, apart from one parent, and it was an, on another issue entirely. It wasn't concerning this, um, these matters. And when the letter, when the, the principal came on board, he invited us for a meeting. We went to him for that meeting. We spent about one hour, 30 minutes, and all he kept telling us was, go and withdraw that matter. If you want your child to remain a student in this ah, school, ah, hi. I am saying it live on TV. If you want your children to remain in this school, go and withdraw that case. Who with said this? Exactly. The principal. The principal, Dr. Kennedy. The president principal. The principal. Farm Zifabui or something like that. He said it to all of us. In fact, when he came, we wrote a letter reporting that our portals were blocked. That letter was duly acknowledged. Mm -hmm. We received, it was received. We thought maybe the meeting was about that letter. Mm. Nothing about that letter was mentioned. When we got to the meeting, he asked the barrister to, I think we asked the barrister to speak on our behalf to let him understand what has been happening, which he did. Immediately we finished. He said, can he advise us? We should go and withdraw those children, withdraw this matter from the EFCC. If we want these children to remain in this school, we are in court and we are here now because these children are here. The same thing the PTA chairman is claiming now. It's the same mm -hmm. rhetoric, that you are here because the children are here. If the children are no longer here. So who speaks on yeah. behalf of the Federal Ministry yeah. of Education in any of you? Who receives As I said, we had invited the principal and for whatever reason he couldn't show no, up. No, no, so I'm so saying, you know, the Federal Ministry is the regulatory body yeah. for unity schools. Yeah. We've had this with the QC in the past about the dirty yeah. tank that the caller mentioned and some embezzlement that happened yeah. within their PTA as well. And I didn't see the side of the federal ministry. Well, I want to believe that the present minister for education, Tyre Maman, is an astute educationist. He was at the law school, as, you know, uh, ch chairman at the law school at the time. So I want to know what exactly is the Ministry of Education under his watch doing on this issue? This matter. Well, so many letters were written. When the whole thing started, even during the election, thing, we, we sent messages, even WhatsApp messages were sent to the, to uh, what, Binta Hajia I think she's the, Permanent secretary to the minister okay. there. And the only response I got personally was okay. That's what she just said hmm. for all the complaints. And we wow. didn't hear anything from them. After about seven, eight months, we now saw a letter that they purportedly came from, mm -hmm. uh, came from the same, she was the same signatory to that same letter. letter. So I don't know the channels that we're supposed what to go to. What was the letter? Was it saying that there's a punitive measure against parents who are in court? Their kids. Did it at any point I, I say that your kids will have to suffer for the consequences of you? Yes, he said they will have their children withdrawn from the school until these issues are resolved. And personally, I was like, this is not reasonable. Hmm. I didn't consider it was as something. So we have to wrap up. Was that your letter or was it just a response to a letter to the school? No, it was a memo that was sent okay. to all FUCs. And funny enough, when the principal came on board in that meeting, when he asked them to go and bring the letter, he had not seen the letter. So I'm wondering if this letter was actually circulated to all federal universities. Uh, because because, because, federal of, our, because of our time, and we have to wrap up soon, what is your ask? Because the reason this matter is still on, because the kids are probably still suspended, I'm assuming. Yeah. What is your ask right now? Because we have this opportunity to discuss it, and hopefully I'll let the comrade come in afterwards. But I'll let you hear you, and then also Mr. Pyles, what exactly are you asking? What are your demands right now? And then I'll get the PTA chairman to respond to that. Go ahead. Well, the demand I am making personally is that... Um, these children's right to education should not be violated yeah. by the people that are supposed to enforce it and protect, and protect, and protect it. That's one. Then secondly, there's a, a little twist in my son's own case. Prior to his suspension, there was a little manipulation and a, a, what do I call it, set up yeah. with which he was suspended. They said a teacher came to school and uh, came to do exam, what's it called, and visually the examination. And he, he minus five marks from some students that uh, were not behaving well in school. That the bag of that teacher was soaked in water by those students. And that it was my son that took that bag and gave the person that soaked it. That they connived together. Mm -hmm. All these things came three to four weeks after our meeting with the principal where he told us that if we don't withdraw those children, that mm. 
we are here because these children are here. Mm. So it was a very direct threat. It yeah. wasn't something that was a, that we are here because, and when we met at the EFCC too, I remember they invited us, the parents, concerned parents, and they invited the PTA chairman and the PRO that we should talk. I said, well, for me, I think the PRO was asking, I said, when these things, they, they had not yet come to pass. There was a threat of, the letter was there and all that. They had blocked their, blocked their portals and all. So we're asking, these portals have been blocked. They said they should go and talk to the school. That's the EFCC people now. To go and talk to the school. And then when I, we met, I was asking them, I said, as the PTA chairman and PRO, what did you do? Yeah. When all this thing was going on. Yeah. The PRO's response to me then was that, this is a PTA chairman that they locked for two days or three days. We see the same person that will now go and be fighting for us. I said, was he locked because he didn't do anything? <laughs> why, why was he locked? I said, you are not talking like a parent at all. Mm, no. Are you sure you are a parent? Let me let the PTA chairman respond because I'm running out of time. Mm -hmm. So you've heard the parents, and I'd like to say he's speaking on behalf of the, 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 the three parents that are affected. What are you going to do going forward from this, um, this show? Well, thank God for this type of program and the anchors, Murayo especially, um, you give everybody opportunity to, to hear their views. It's in the public opinion, but there are rules and regulations that we should learn to follow. This woman has attacked me in office last time. She came to my office, she wanted to beat me up just because of what I, I, I wasn't always suspended the students and things like that. Well, the way it goes, the ball is in their court. We have told you all what obtains, even from the ministry and so on and so forth. They say they want to distract us, but we are not distracted as PT executive. What goes on abated? We are doing the little we can do to support okay. the school. All right, we have to wrap up now, but I must call out can, the. Can I, can I share something? Can oh, I, yeah, like, like 10 seconds, like yes, a yes, yes, time. Yes, yes. My, my take on this matter is this the, the ministry should please allow these children. To go to school. Okay, exactly. I think that's fair enough, and I think that that's, that's the same thing I was going to say. Mm -hmm. I have to call out the Federal Ministry of Education yes. to insist and ensure that these children return back to school, whilst the principal, which we also invited, could make it to ensure that this PTA, the buhaha going on right now, is resolved, and so that there, there, none of these disruptions so happens again for children anymore. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm.